Rashid Lake and good morning all my dear friends. I hope all are in good health. Now today I took a short free time from my retreat that I've been doing for the last one month. The reason that I'm on this line today is that I want to share a little bit about my view about drinking boiled hot water. Uh, nowadays, many people talk about to drink hot water and drink hot tea like that. So I thought to share some of my view on why hot water is important to drink and what are the benefits and how it helps. So I want to share this, my view in two, two different uh, categories of the benefit of the hot water. Now, basically we say that the first medicine which human being experienced thousands of years ago when people does not know how to cook, how to cultivate, and even they don't know how to use a prepare a cloth. So meaning is they lived like a stone age, like uh, wild animals. So since they have been eating all the raw, uncultivated fruits or food that are growing in the forest. So due to eating too much the raw, the stomach could not digest this food and then they started having some stomach problems. So gradually, at that time, all those people slowly invented the hot water, which is called natural hot spring water, which they invented, they found is something warm and then they try and then later they started drinking hot water. So that is what we say is the first medicine in human history. So hot water is very good for digestive system. Now, uh, according to Tibetan medicine, uh, digestive system is called Pove Medu. So actually there are three energies essential to have a proper good function of the digestive system, which is called the digestive bile, which means is something to do with the metu, means fire and the heat of the stomach. And that is from the five elements, which is the most important one for digestive power. The second is called fl the flame, decomposition flame or mixing flame. Tibetan they call it pekin nyakche means to to decompose all the in, um, uh, the food into very small particles like a powder so it will help to digest easily and then there's one we call menyam lung the fire accompanying wind or metabolic wind which mainly helps to make the movement of the, all the food inside the stomach, uh, eaten in a, a first plate, second plate, the dessert, whatever you eat. So all will be movement, movement so that they can equally digest it, all the food. So these three energies are very important uh, for our proper digestion, which is very important for our physical and mental health. Now, of course, the food is important, but more important is the machine that should work properly to benefit the body, to produce the, the right energy necessary. So good digestive system produce all the essential energy, like the blood, the lymphatic systems, and the rest of the body constitutions. So um, what they do now, this three energy, as I said, the fire, fire digestive bile 
which actually means to cook the food I can in the stomach, beside the cook, we cook in the kitchen. So that is the fire which is the most important to absorb the food, to digest the food. And the second one is the water, which we call flame or bacon. Bacon means water and earth elements. So this, this will help to decompose all the, the hard, uh, the heavy things into the fine particles. So it will benefit to uh, digest easy. Now the more important, again the more, second most important or more, even more important is the loom or the wind, which is very important, uh, uh, plays an important role to function in proper digestion. So the wind metabolic or menyam loom will help first to movement and second it will help to separate the result of the food into two categories. The first abstracted essential energy of the food will transport, will move to the liver and the small intestine to produce the blood. And the remaining residues, the wind will push downward into the intestine, to the colon for the defecation. So that is one function of the loom. And the, the last one is the loom that will clean the stomach. It will not let any residues remain in the loom. And that will, that is depend on the loom, proper function of the loom, which we call it cleaning. So the loom will push everything down into the intestine and then to the the big intestine, the colon, so it doesn't stay in the intestine or in the stomach to create a, uh, a health problem. Okay, so beside that, that this loom, what we call loom in Tibetan, the wind energy, which is a very, very subtle energy, and it's not the loom that we talk about the air or wind that we talk about the external, it's an internal, very, very subtle wind energy, which is is the basis of our mental consciousness, mind. So we say Lung is the current, the energy of your mind, means psychology. So Lung plays very important role together with your mind. So for good digestion, also have a strong influence from your, from your mental attitude. When you eat, relax, peacefully, happy, joyfully, appreciating the food enjoy the food and then chew well so feel the test and then the stomach will function very relaxed and very peacefully and then after that the extracted energy from this food those food that you ate will produce the blood and blood is the the, the most important energy for your physical capacity, for strength, for energy, as well as a mental capacity. So good blood circulation, good movement of the blood in all your channels, arteries and veins, which will distribute essential energy to all the organs and the physical constitutions like muscles. Muscle good energy depends on good circulation of the blood and the lymphatic system. Good quality of the fat depend totally on um, good circulation of this energy, two energy, the lymphatic system and the blood circulation. And then good quality of bone, good quality of your bone marrow. And then finally, what we call it essential drop. And then we call dung means the light, the brightness, the lucidity, uh, the, the lumicity of your body, energy, which we call dung, the light. Nowadays people even call it aura. Anyhow, this all depends on the proper function of the digestive system. So now here you understand that how important is the fire. That is very, very important. We call pove medu. So all the disease and the health we always connect root, fundamental root is always our digestive system and particularly the fire which cooks the food, means which digests the food. 
even if you eat raw food, a very heavy raw food like beans, sometimes even people eat raw meat or even nuts which are not cooked, even not roasted. They are quite heavy, but even then our stomach accepts and digests unless until some have a very weak digestive system, then I don't know. Basically, it, we digest all the food, we, even we eat raw, raw vegetables. That, so I hope that uh, a brief explanation about the digestive system, where all the three energies are essential, and particularly the fire. That's why we say power metre. The heat or fire energy of the stomach, power means stomach. Now, why the hot water is good for the digestive system? People in Asia, or particularly in Tibet, or many countries in Asia, they have a custom, a culture to drink hot water in the morning. So, first thing, the hot water in the morning will clean your stomach. You don't let any residues, impurities that are remaining in the stomach from the last night's dinner, so it will push, it will put down into the uh, intestine and a little, little bit down to the colon. And also it will filter or the energy of the, the kidney more better functioning. So the urination system, because the, the, the after extraction of the energy, the solid energy and the liquid food, the liquid part, the good quality will produce the lymphatic system and the residues will go to the kidney, to the urinary bladder, and then to the urination, you know, to the toilet, yeah? So anyhow, uh, drinking hot water in the morning is a very, very good for your digestive system and to eliminating the residues and the toxin which are accumulated in the stomach or intestine or in the kidney, wherever, it will clean out, okay? Then, another thing is, it will improve your fire because fire is a nature hot. So when you drink anything which is hot, warm, it will help to proper function of the, your stomach. So hot water is very essential to drink at least three times a day, if possible, morning and then the lunch time and also in the, in the, after dinner before you go to bed because it helps to digest your food and not to produce gases or slow digestion, heavy digestion like this, and you don't feel any inflamed or gases in the morning. So these are very important to drink the hot water uh, quite regularly. In Asia, I told you that many countries like Tibet, of course, people drink it. In Bhutan, Sikkim, all the Himalayan area, they have a this culture influence from I think Tibetan medicine to drink hot water uh, but it must be boiled hot water more hot is better but I don't mean you have to burn your tongue and mouth be careful with that but the more as soon as, as much as you can resist the heat of the hot water will be better for your stomach okay in Asia, I told you that in China or Korea or Vietnam or Japan, I think all these countries, they used to drink quite a lot of hot water. Anyhow, in, in the West, when we talk about drinking hot water, people laugh at you. They say, what? That means for the Western people to drink water means it should be a cold and also very cold from the fridge. They also put ice in the water. So that means you're using something too cold and that means it will help to make the fire reduce its power, capacity. It's like in the fire, if you put water, your fire will distinguish. So similarly, if you drink too much cold water, it's very bad for your stomach and also for your urinary bladder and the kidney. So um, please don't drink too much cold water. It's not very good for your stomach for the digestive power. And now, why hot water is good, not only for stomach, but hot water is very good for, to absorb, to absorb the fat that we eat. The fatty, oily food we eat, so it helps to digest the fat. 
logically you think that when you have fatty food, if you boil it, it becomes light thinner. So like that, if you eat something like too much cheese or butter or too much meat or fatty food, oily food, then the hot water will make digest all this and then they don't let it produce cholesterol or fatty liver. You know, like these things will not happen because it will support to absorb the fat and help to digest easily. So hot water is very good for cholesterol, fatty liver, and it will also help for the diabetic problem because diabetic nature is cold nature. So hot water is very, very important to drink for many reasons. Col colon problems like hemorrhoid, uh, colitis ulcer in the, in the colon. So like that, there are different problems, which is a very, in, also in the intestine, for proper function of the intestine and good function of the kidney, okay? In the West, we say drink a lot of water for your kidney uh, better function. I don't say it's wrong, but too much cold water, because the, now, yes, before that, I will explain you. All the organs will go into two categories related with the two energy. The two energy means the hot and the cold energy. Now there are organs which will go, go, will go into the hot category, which are called liver, gallbladder, small intestine, heart. Like these organs will go into the category of the hot nature. Uh, you can say temperature or energy. So when this organ, their nature is hot, but if you eat something which is create too much heat, or too much hot uh, energy, or you do something uh, behavioral or lifestyle that creates too much heat. So that means you are putting in the fire a gasoline, means that you are putting more heat, that means it will increase the heat more than what is essential for pro proper function of the bile energy or the fire energy. So then it will produce a disease like fever, the infections and so on. So excess of fire produced by the food or behavior or even psychology like anger and hatred. These things will supporting the fire to become more powerful or more and then it became sometimes if you have produced too much like alcohol too much drinking alcohol so they will make more create more heat in the liver and the on the so they will put it a certain disease which is acute and it can cause a serious consequences now another category of the the, the organ that will go into the bacon or earth and water elements category means cold energy or cold temperature that's a first is the lungs, stomach, colon, the big intestine, the kidney, the urinary bladder. So this organ will go into the bacon category. So this organ, naturally they are cold. So if you do something behavior with the cold nature, like too much contact with air condition, too much shower and bath with the cold water, too much swimming pool, too much staying naked in the summertime, uh, too much um, uh, lying down on the humid humid ground or green grounds. So that means you're con creating too much cold that will penetrate into your body through the millions of pores that you have in your body. So penetrating all this cold will diminish the metabolic energy of this organ and that you can get more cold. You understand? No, I hope that people will be, make clear understanding. When you penetrate too much cold inside, automatically your blood circulation will be weak, your digestive power will be weak, you have more back pain, like many things will create because of you have too much contact with it. And besides the food that you eat or the drinks, 
Now, for example, in summer, people drink too much cold drinks, Coca-Cola, Fanta, which is a very bad for your back in problem or cold energy. I see water, I see <coughs> even the beer, which you drink too much cold. Oh, these are, and then beside that you eat too much cold nature because all the food will go into three category. All the food will be either in the category of cold nature or hot nature or neutral. Neutral is not very much, like rice is, is a neutral or bread, these are kind of neutral, but the rest, all the vegetable will, mostly the vegetable will be in the cold nature. All the meat and the proteins will go into the hot nature, so like that. So if you eat something that is cold in nature, and also some, uh, a lot of food that are related with this test, sweet test, like, so if you eat this, then it will increase your pain, means cold energy will increase, so then you get sick. So now here, um, what I really want to share with you is that um, if you drink too much hot water, it will help first not to make too much problem with the tipa because water is water itself nature is cold, but because of being boiled warm water, then it's more less harmful for creating too much heat to the other organs, but it will help to improve the metabolic metabolism of other organs which are cold in nature to increase it, okay? So it's a very good to drink hot water for general health. It is good for the diabetic also, it's good for the cholesterol, it's good for gases, heavy digestion, all those things. And also, there are many people who have a dry cough, constant cough. When you have constant cough, dry cough, without any flame or mucus, normally they are we call loom, related with the loom. So if you drink hot water, you will have less dry cough. So like that, there are many benefits, which I thought to share you how hot water will benefit you. Hot water will help you very good for the blood circulation, more heat, more warm hand, more warm food, better circulation. There are many things quite useful. So uh, uh, there are many uh, beneficial points from the drinking hot water. So try to practice to drink hot water rather than cold water. I used to drink a lot of hot water every day and all my students, I have many students in many countries for the last 30 years have been teaching. <coughs> so the food, the hot water that I've been drinking is so good for my health. It's good for my stomach. It's good for my um, energy in general in better circulation. And Every student, all the students that I explain hot water is good, so they experience to drink hot water, and most of them are very happy to learn that, okay? So this is one thing I want to share with you. Uh, drink hot water is good for you. As I told you, it is also very good for your kidney and the bladder and prostate. I'm 70 years old, and I have no problem for urination. I just go normal urination because I drink only hot water. If you drink too much cold water, you go urinating, urinating, urinating. It doesn't mean that your kidney is better. Kidney is abnormal functioning because it cannot resist all the liquid. It cannot keep the liquid. So it doesn't mean that when you have, uh, when you have a diarrhea, diarrhea is good for your colon, no. So that means the organs are improperly functioning. Proper function should be a systematic way of defecation and urination, then it's called healthy organs, okay? So this is one part I want to share with you. Uh, now, the second part, which I thought to share with my friends. Now, why hot water is good to drink during this crisis of the most crazy virus that we people, and all the people are experiencing in the world these days? So uh, virus, according to information I receive, uh, I hear from the different um, sources, they say this virus cannot resist the heat. 
and there, there is a more easy to get developed fast in the cold. So basically speaking, that um, whether it is this virus, that present virus, or even the grippy, the influenza or flu that we have, which is contagious, Tibetan we call chamrim, the flu or the, the grippy that passes from one people to another one. It's a bacterial problem. So virus or bacterial, more or less the, the I mean, the similar cases. So, um, since it cannot stay or resist the heat, that means this virus can develop more easily and more fast in the cold area. So now in our body, our lungs is a cold, in the category of cold energy. So when you inhale anything that will go with the air into the lungs. So whether you inhale a virus or whether you inhale bacterial or dust any through any mean through cold through contact through air whatever that inhale will go direct to the lungs and since the lungs in nature is cold so they easily develop inside and there's no way to destroy this because lungs does not have warm energy not heat energy it's clear for you now beside that our throat which is a very obvious main center for inhaling, ex exhaling, eating, drinking, sneezing, all this is very much related with the throat. Now in the throat, there is a kind of a, a uh, how's the, uh, what they call it, saliva, salivary system, a mucus or spit that are located, concentrated in the throat. And this spit or the salivary, the saliva, which is, nature is cold. And it has a sticky uh, matter, like a small, like a light glue, which is, stays here. And people will notice that it's a sticky or thick. Even the spit you throw out, or saliva that comes out, the mucus city that you have in your throat, all these are related with the pekin. The reason is pekin, petsi, we call petsi. So that one is here. So when you inhale any dust or bacteria or virus, this sticky saliva or salivary system will get stuck, stuck to this, all the virus or bacteria will stuck to this area, sticky because it's like a glue. So now when they are in the throat with the saliva or with um, the spit or mucus or with the flame that are normally here when you cough or in the sinus region in the nose. So they stay here because they are sticky and this virus will not die because they are cold and this sticky matter are cold because of the nature is baking or flame, English they call it, yeah. So when you inhale oxygen, air. The lungs is like a vacuum cleaner. It will Yeah, so when you inhale the air or oxygen, this virus will go with the air and into the lungs. It's like a vacuum cleaner. It sucks all the dust, you know. So like when your lungs make like that, it will push all the mucosities or, or the salivas with the bacteria into your lungs. So once they are in the lungs, and the lungs is cold in nature, and so uh, there's no way to, to kill this virus or bacteria because it's called nature. So they easily develop inside. And beside, our air that we breathe is not hot, it's a cool. It's not a cold, but it's cool. So that means it supports more, get more cold the lungs uh, with the virus which are inside. So they easily develop, they, 
they increase or develop very rapidly, very fast, and which will block all the channels, artery and veins in the lungs. The lungs cannot have the proper pumping or take the oxygen right amount necessary for the lungs for proper functioning. So this is the one reason I think, I think, uh, so don't say that it's, uh, I, I absolutely right. No, I think it blocks all the channels. So that is how it makes the respiratory system problem, breathing problem, lack of oxygen. So I, as far as information, we hear many people die nowadays with this virus because they cannot breathe. So breathing is very, very, um, how to say, essential for survive the life. And it depends on the heart and the lungs. Okay, so these two has to go together. Now, when we, now the question is how, why the hot water is good for the, for this kind of, it helps now the hot water, which is hot in nature, or more hot temperature, first, hopefully, it will kill the virus right on the spot in the throat. Because the virus cannot resist or heat or survive with the hot. So it hopefully it will destroy on the spot with hot water. In case it doesn't destroy, then at least it will push all this virus down in the downward rather than into the lungs. So heat will help to move all the salivas or mucus that are or in the blocked in the the sinus region in the throat and it will go into the stomach. Once they are in the stomach, then there's a much less danger because in the stomach we have a special fire which is called digestive fire or we say proven matter. So this fire in the stomach and the acidity in the stomach has a possibility to destroy, destroy this virus because since we can digest the raw food or even raw meat or heavy nuts, then why not this virus could be destroyed by the stomach? Unless until someone has a very weak metabolic stomach power, then I don't know, but the normal people, that's why we say young people don't get easily because they have a very strong fire in the stomach and all people have a weak digestive system. So even if it goes down there, you cannot easily destroy because of their old people have a weak the fire energy by the nature, with the age. So um, this virus which goes into stomach, then it has a less life threatening like what is in the lungs. So once they are in the stomach, even if it doesn't destroy by the digestive heat or power or hot food and hot water, but at least it will create some stomach problem, but we have more, possibly the more time to cure these stomach problems through different methods. But in the lungs, once they develop serious, the main problem is the breathing, the respiration, which will block, okay? So that's why hot water is good to drink regularly. Uh, every half an hour nowadays, it's better to drink hot water, but it must be boiled hot water. If you are having a water direct from the tape, better you boil it. If you are drinking mineral water, then boil it until it's hot. So more hot you can resist drink is better for your health and to help for this, okay? So this is one information I want to make more clear understanding why hot water is good, mainly because the mucosity, the saliva does not stay in the throat and not to get this virus stuck here and then will go into the lungs. And beside the hot water will improve the lungs energy like that. So more is warm, more expansion of chest <laughs> like that's better. Okay, so this is very important to, to understand. Now, please think about that. Okay, now another thing that I want to share with you beside the hot water. Also, it's very good to drink a tea prepared from is called like a medicinal tea or herbal tea is a very easy you can find easily one is the ginger 
take a, a half thumb size of the ginger, three, four cardamoms or five cardamoms, the green one, the small size. Of course, you can use the big one also, but the small one. And three, four cloves. Cloves, which is very, all these trees are very good for the tree energy also and for the digestive system. And also they improve your immune system slowly, not immediately, but if you use this regularly, it will surely help very much for your stomach fire energy, okay? So ginger is good for digestive heat, fire energy, is good for the cholesterol, is good for uh, metabolism of the other uh, organs like intestine, the colon and all this, yeah? Cardamom is very good for the kidney and urinary bladder and prostata and also the cloves, which is very good for lungs, for asthmatic problem. So in Tibet, people used to chew one small, uh, only small uh, cloves when they were climbing high up in the mountain in order to have a support for better respiration. So that means it's good for the high altitude. If you just chew a little bit, not take too much, but a little bit, you chew and make a, a saliva liquid, then it uh, will help you for your lungs not to be collapsed in the high altitude. So that means if it's good for the high altitude, for the respiration, so I'm sure it will help for short breath or dif difficulty in the oxygen, not having enough oxygen. So these three ingredients, you put two glass of hot water, both all these three, you chop it, and then you boil for two, three minutes. And after that, you filter, you don't put nothing else, only no tea, no any tisana, nothing. Only these three ingredients. And if possible, you put a little bit of saffron, if you have four, five, six strings of this good quality of saffron that we have in Spain also. So these saffrons, and after boiling you filter, and then you can put a little bit of lemon inside. Excuse the lemon. And also, yes, lemon also you boil for a short time together. And then you filter all this, and then you put honey, honey, honey inside, or sugar, whatever you like. If not, if you don't put the sweets, any sweets, because then all the other ingredients are hot and test and sour, so sometimes they make some acidity in stomach. So uh, not to have acidity, please drink, um, use some sugar or, or pure honey. So the sweet test will make this hot test and, as and sour test diminish and will not make a side effect, okay? So it's kind of antidote for these two. Hot and sour is the sweet, so put some that and you drink this two or three times uh, a day, it's very good for your, all the stomach digestive system, as I told you, metabolism, is good for your immune system. So it's a very, very good one that I explain to all my students in the course, and they, most of them, they say, yes, they drink this tea and it's very good, okay? So this is one thing that I want to share with you and that will even be more effective than the only hot water. If you drink this hot tea made from this ingredient, it will be even better to clean out the saliva and the dirt that are concentrated in the throat due to the, the virus or bacteria or even the dust or what you call even the spring pollution, the pollution, uh, so allergy, spring allergy, yes, yeah, sorry, allergy, so all these things to clean your throat, which always <coughs> like this kind of, a, it will help you, okay? So these few things that I thought to share with you. And now question is, I don't say that it's 100% that it will work uh, to eliminate the problem with the virus or, or even the grippy, but basically it will help quite uh, well. So you have to think on the logical way, how, whatever I said, it does make sense, please, first you don't trust or believe 100% or neither you neglect, ah, I don't tr I don't agree with these things, these stupid things, don't do like that. First you experience, try for some time, 
and see what makes the difference in your stomach. Drinking cold water makes your stomach feel better or hot water makes you feel better. Drinking hot water makes your throat more clean or more easy respiration or not, or just cold water. If you drink cold icy water, what does, it will attack your throat. Okay, so these things are experience, please. After experiencing, if it makes sense to you, please try to practice regularly in your daily life, not only once a time, no, or not only during the problem, no. You do this regularly. So uh, from my own experience, it helped me a lot. As I told you, I'm 70 years old, and I have been a heavy smoker for many years before. Now since eight, nine years, I stopped smoking, or more or less. I have no lungs problem, everything is fine, respiration is fine. I even went to Ladakh last year two times, climbing over uh, 5,000 5, meters high. I have never had any problem because I used to do this kind of special care for myself. And now one additional information is time to time, what we they call it here, breathing yoga, the breathing exercise which is also very good for make your lungs pump better, okay? So I think many people know that, and please do this as a regular, as a, your regular practice, so that it will make exercise or train your lungs to be a more, more capacity, okay? Like for example, like that close one nose, so, Ex inhale from one side, exhale from the repeat three times, three times each. And then another one, inhale air from the nose and exhale from the mouth, which is very good for your lungs and heart. Like So do this, that it will help the lungs to move. That means blood circulation, the lymphatic, the oxygen will work better in the lungs and your lungs will be not, will not be uh, blocked in the circulation system. And so it's, that makes more. So, so these are very good to practice to improve your lungs capacity, which is called breathing exercise or breathing yoga. A very popularly people know that, and I hope people know that. So please do these things for additional for your uh, better quality of lungs functioning so the lungs don't get collapsed easily. And then another thing is keep warm all the time. Never expose your chest in the cold because then you more easily get either influenza or flu or not only the virus. In generally, if you have air condition, if you have too much air condition, you get problem with your even that with allergy or anything, you have to keep warm, okay? So these are a few things that I thought to share with you. And now, last is now, many people have psychologically very much distraught emotionally because of this virus that are growing throughout the world, uh, starting from China. So millions of people are going through with a panic, fear, worry, so emotional, they are very much disturbed with the fear, panic, and then besides being locked down at home in, in your individual's home, also many people get a lot of stress because they cannot stay always inside. Because in the West, people have no culture to remain in, at home for a long time, especially in the, Euro, uh, in the Western society. You have this kind of habit of going out, social gathering, going to the restaurants, and the, the hotel, I mean the bar and the restaurants, eating and drinking and meeting with your friends and going walking. So you have a lot of this uh, habit of being uh, more outside than at home. So that's why pe many people get anguish, many people get nervous, many people get agitation, many people get, apart from the fear and all those things, they get really unpleasant feeling to be at home locked, okay? So what you have to do is, I think 
whether you are happy or not happy, but you have to remain because of the question is your life. It's the disease. So if you prefer not to have suffering or problem, then you have to understand and be patient and to be more intelligent that all this kind of problem that a human being experiences or faces in a lifetime, none of them is permanent. Everything is impermanent. From moment to moment it changes. In the past, there are a lot of his history tells about so many problems that human beings experience, including the war and even the, the virus that we have a lot of stories. None of them are permanent. It comes and goes. So we have to make feel confident that this problem that we face now is also a temporary or short time. So sooner or later it will go away and people will again be in a normal life. So this keep a confidence. The second thing, as I said, whether you are happy or not happy, you have to remain. Then better remain at home with a happily feeling. This is a kind of a coincident occasion, uh, opportunity that we got it to remain at home, to rest, to relax, because before we always are so hectic, moving all the time, since morning till late evening, outside, moving, working, stress, tension, nervous. I mean, everybody see this crazy world moving all the time and come back home with the full of stress and then again you go to sleep. So this is a routine that we have, you know, go out morning, come back with a lot of stress, tension and go to sleep. So very hardly you have a time for your family, with your family. You don't have time for yourself to do to, to something good for your health. So now is the time until the things goes back to normal. Take this opportunity and try to enjoy it, your life with your family. Be happy with your family. Enjoy the time with your children, with your parents, whoever is with you. And if there's a lonely people, no one is with you. But even then you enjoy your time doing meditation or praying or reading books or studying or listening to the interesting teachings or, or, or there are many things that you can do to pass your time inside. Don't feel that you are in the prison. No. We are not in the prison, we are at our home. So home is your temple, home is your, the spiritual place. So enjoy your time with your family, enjoy the moment for doing some recitation of mantras and meditation, do some yoga, some exercise. Even if you don't have to do, just walk inside your room at least two, three thousand steps a day, which is essential, not only sitting, sitting and watching the TV, which does not give you any interesting news, only tells you about more and more problems, which disturbs your emotional mind. So I never watch TV or listen, watch any kind of news, even on the um, internet or computer, whatever. I just occasionally observe to check what the situation is going on around with the virus in general. But besides that, I don't do it. So I've been doing meditation for the last one month with a different uh, retreat with the Medicine Buddha that you see the Tanga behind me. And uh, the Tara, the mother of all the holy beings, the Buddha of compassion, and the uh, Padmasambhava, Guru Rinpoche, the most powerful force and energy to destroy all the negative forces, invisible negative forces. And now I'm doing the retreat of Buddha Shakyamuni, the origin, the root, the fundamental the guide, the guidance that we receive in the Buddhist, the Buddha Shakyamuni, our origin of the wisdoms. So, I request all my friends to remain at home and take the best opportunity to, to enjoy the time with your family. 
do some study, read books, do meditation. These are the way to calm your mind down. Watching TV and being unhappy will not change your life. It will make you more sick, more depressive feeling. So enjoy the life, be happy, and wait for the change. And everything will change soon because I said nothing is permanent. Everything is impermanent. So let's pray together, meditate together for the better world. Long life all the great masters. And then all the people who are suffering in the hospital to recover very rapidly and to have a, a more beautiful, normal life. And unfortunately, all the people who died due to this virus, uh, we pray for their uh, peaceful in the intermediate state we call parto and also to reborn, to be rebirth or reborn in a better land, in a pure land, and less suffering. And then we pray for the world in general to be more peaceful, less destructions with the war, catastrophe, the environment destructions, and virus, and so on. So these things to be free from uh, free, so that a human being can have a, enjoy the precious human life. And please eat well, stay at home, more safe at the moment, and take care of yourself. And uh, hopefully all my friends, the students, looking forward to see you soon with good health. Until then, I wish you all to be happy. Uh, and I pray, for you all too during my uh, very simple retreat and um, finally touch it the lake to all my friends thank you